Hey everybody. So we live in a world of many, many distractions, primarily thanks to the phones that we carry around with us and all the various different apps and accessibility to things thanks to our phone. On my phone, I know I have Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Miami Herald. I could check what's going on. I want to see a score on hockey, NHL app. I have that. Check up on who's coming into town, how's their flight doing, flight aware, and I can see that. And then there's the endless notifications that you can get, which I turn off all the notifications. Too distracting. And I don't even have Instagram or Twitter. Don't even do that. And yet it's just a tremendous thanks to the phone and thanks to accessibility, instantaneous accessibility to so many things. It's so easy to be in a constant state of distraction. This week I did a funeral. Did a funeral. I drove up there. It was, wasn't around the corner. It was about an hour drive to get there in traffic. Obviously, I'm not, I don't look at my phone when I drive. That's not a good idea. Did the funeral. Didn't bring my phone in. Can't have that there to be distracted. Didn't have it on the drive back. Came back to my office and in one chat alone, in one WhatsApp chat, there were 64 messages. 64 of them! It was all about the Purim party, our upcoming Purim party, and a great discussion, very, very involved discussion about the drinks that we need and uh, the type of sodas that the bartender needs, etc., etc. 64 messages, 64 pings that I missed. And so in our day and age, you have to actively shut things down. Otherwise, you'll just be pinballed around. If you have everything on and every chat, and you'll just like, you won't get anything done. You won't get anything done. You'll just be constantly pushed from one thing to another, answering this email, answering that text, looking at that notification. You have to actively shut it down. That's the simple reality in our world, thanks to our cell phones. You know, in Jewish law, we take distractions very, very seriously. Very seriously. And I'll share with you a halacha, Jewish law, that expresses this. You know, when a, a rav, when a rabbi comes into a room, you're supposed to stand up. It's not so much covered for him, but what he represents, Torah. Show your respect for Torah, we stand up. There's an exception when you're not supposed to stand up when a well-known Talmud Chacham, a big Rav, walks into a room. And that's if he walks into a place of employment. He walks into a business and you're working for somebody and you're at your desk or you're doing whatever. You are not supposed to stand up to show him kavod, to show him honor. You know why? Because by doing that, you interrupt your work for your employer and thereby steal from him. Jewish law. You are not supposed to show kavod ha-Torah, to show honor for dignity Torah that we're normally required to do. Overriding that is because when you stopped your work, you got distracted. Now, it isn't for that one second or five seconds that it takes for you to stand up, acknowledge him, and go back to work, because what happens is when you get distracted, it shuts down and you gotta start again. You gotta go, where was I? Oh yeah, you lost your flow and you gotta get back into it. I remember many, many years ago getting a real good lesson about this, about losing the flow and starting again and how costly it was. When I lived in the old city of Jerusalem, so the streets there are very, very narrow. And I remember in my dormitory, we needed to get a new refrigerator. You didn't have a Best Buy truck just pull up and then they take it in. Everything is very tight and narrow over there. So they take it to the parking lot and then you hire an old Arab sablan. A man, a sablan literally means like a schlepper. He would like carry the thing on his back and he had this system of straps that would go across his head and on his back and he'd lift it and he'd put it on his back and very, very slowly walk through the streets and take it up the steps and everything. And I remember before we hired him, he was very, very precise how many stops are there going to be? How many like 
on the floors. How many times do they have to stop and put that down? Because every time he stops and puts that thing down, it requires a tremendous amount of exertion and work to get it back up and go again. And that's how we have to view life. That that little distraction, it wasn't a question of a second or two. It was, where was I? Oh yeah, you lost the flow. And now you gotta start it up again. And that takes so much more extra effort. You wanna hear an, see an example of someone who's like totally in a zone and not getting distracted. So I gave a link to a music video. My essay, I mentioned ZZ Top. Watch this video, I'll give you a moment. Watch the drummer on this video of this song. Take a moment and take a look at that. Okay, we're back. Took a look at that. Do you see the zone that guy was in? Do you see how focused he was when he was drumming? He wasn't interested in checking out, oh, what's on my WhatsApp over here? Or distracted or anything. He was totally focused and in the zone of what he was doing. No distraction. Again, that's how you get greatness, is you don't just get pinballed by everything going on and respond to everything. You stay focused on what you know is important and what is great and what's fantastic. Thank God we Jewish people, we have Shabbat. Shabbat gives us a taste of that. We shut down the phone. You don't get in the car. You don't run to movies. You don't go shopping. You stay focused on what's important. Family, community, connection with God, prayer, learning Torah. That's what it's about. So Shabbat should take us in through the week and we should learn from Shabbat. We should learn from Frank Beard, the drummer of ZZ Top, and stay focused and not constantly get distracted by all the noise around us constantly. Have a good Shabbat.